Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Shit Moms Won't Say. And also, I am 100% lying. We are not filming in the evening time because my pal today is sitting in England. You may know her from her amazing, amazing platform, the LGBT Mummies Tribe. It's a great, great site where they've basically taken all of this amazing lesbian content and made it a very, very consumable and enjoyable experience for all, lesbian or not. Uh, my pal from across the pond, mom of two and one on the way. Yes, this gorgeous chick is sitting here pregnant with the flu. Laura Rose, <laughs> they're good. How are you? I'm I'm doing better than you are. I'm surviving. <laughs> You're just like powering through. She just got on like 10 minutes ago and she was like, listen, she's like, my kid had to go to the toilet. She's like, I had to brush my hair. She's like, I have the flu. And I was like, we don't have to do this now. And she's like, no, I brushed my hair. Like, you're not hearing me. We're doing this right now. I'm done. Yeah, I'm ready. Done. Well, welcome. I hope you feel better. And how so you. you're you're pregnant. When when are you due? Uh, June. So I'm just over seven months now. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. I'm just all bump. Yeah. You're all bump. So you like get out of the throwing up phase and then you get the flu. Yeah. I- I've been mm-hmm. out of it for a few months and I'm just in the eat everything in the cupboard phase. Mm-hmm. Or just I want to sleep after every meal phase, which is difficult. Um, but yeah. I I'm have that and I'm not pregnant. Terrible. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> What a like mom joke that was. Good for me. Okay. Anyway, welcome to my show. Let's jump into the big mom three. Uh, We'll go there and we'll talk about some other cool stuff in a minute. Mm -hmm. So first question, big mom three, did you always know you wanted to be a mom? Yes, hundred percent. I always had in my head that we'd have four, I'd have four, whoever I was with. Um, And I always wanted, you know, to be part of big family. I'm an only child. I have a half sister. Um, who came along later in life. But yeah, I always wanted a big family and I always, it was my dream to get married, have kids. So yeah. That's so cool. And you have two right now. So what, what's the age breakdown? Um, our oldest, our daughter's nearly seven. Our youngest is three and a bit. And this one. So there's a three and a half year gap between all three of them. That's nice. So like, you know, that's, that's like a good, I don't know. I don't even know what that means. When people say that, right? That's like a good age gap. They can hang out and be friends and stuff. Well, they can help a bit more, can't they? <laughs> That's, yeah, that too. They can, you know, they can pick up mom yeah. responsibilities. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. Second question of Big Mom 3. What is the shittiest or most backhanded piece of advice you've ever gotten from another mother or parent? I think a lot of our community get the whole, you'll get there, which is when people are trying to be kind and they want to be helpful but it's not helpful and it really can be disconcerting if you're really struggling um, on your path to parenthood, whatever it may be. Um, and also just when people, I can't remember baby brain. What did I, I we did have this conversation <laughs> a few minutes ago. I can't remember what the other thing was that I'd said. Oh, you were talking about um, just like be happy with oh, like the one you chose, oh, yeah. the one you That's have, it. you know. Baby brain. Yeah, you should you count yourself lucky you know, you've already got two or you've already got one. Um, And I think, yes, completely. I think we're really humbled and as many of our community are to have one child, let alone more than one. Um, But if you're from a big family or, you know, you're really passionate about family and family values and you've always dreamed of a big family and you don't, you know, we don't go out much, you know, we're always with the kids. You know, we haven't had a date night in like three years. Um, For us, you know, our kids are our life. So our family's not yet complete. And that that a lot of people feel still. So they want to extend their family and it can still be a struggle. So I think when people say, oh, you know, you should count yourself lucky. Yes, you're right. No, I don't need reminding. We, we, we want to grow our family because for us, that is our be all and end all. Um, because we don't, you know, we are a new family unit. We're always together. So, yeah, that can be irritating when people say it, especially when they don't know the context of your journey or how difficult it's been to get there, et cetera. You know, we're very, very lucky. We know that. Um, but it has been a struggle, as for many of the people that we support. 
you're also very polite. So my response to that is <laughs> it's none of your fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try. So, I, I, in my old age, I have got a little bit more polite. <laughs> in your old age, I think we're the okay. same age, but it, I think it's your mature yeah, age me. versus my mature age. But like things like that drive me nuts, though. When you're the, well, you know, be happy. You know, you have one beautiful, healthy baby. Yes, it doesn't negate the want yeah. or like almost need for need completing yeah. your family. And you guys, so you guys posted something great the other day, which like, I'm not, a, I don't comment a lot, but I was like, I have to come on this. You posted something that was like, how, how many of like, you know, our lesbian friends out there have gotten the like, which one of you is the mom? The real mom. The real mom. The mm. real mom. So you guys are posting some good shit out there, but like, that's another one. And people don't get that if they're not like, sort of part of our community of course yeah like, you're not getting a heterosexual couple being asked like well which one of you is the mom like that's the yeah mom. um so that's a that's a gripe of mine so let's let's just put that out there so let's yeah. get into the third question the big mom three what is a um skill or superpower you had before becoming a mom that you think's really helped you as a mom storytelling so i was really good at english at school and i did english um you might not be aware of GCSE level we had um, in England. And no, we're, I um, we're uncultured swine here in America. I don't even no, know. No, I don't know what, what exams <laughs> we have. Um, None yeah, of that. I, I loved English and um, I really enjoyed it and was quite good at writing stories or telling stories. And I did acting and performing when I was younger. Um, so, yeah, for me, it's storytelling with the kids. So making up silly stories, you know, before bedtime or teaching them how to make up stories once upon a time there was or we'll we'll do one where we do it together so I'll go once upon a time there was a and then she'll go a big dragon and he went to the and then Stanley like our son will do that you know he'd try and chuck his words random words number blocks or <laughs> hey and you're like no that doesn't work that's a but, terrible story Stanley yeah it's not it's great better. But, but with um with our daughter like she likes it and like, it's a fun game to get them engaged but it's also like a learning game you know getting their minds going but yeah, storytelling is fun because it gets them involved and keeps magic going. They love they love books anyway. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. 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 So let's let's talk about a couple of a couple of different things. I want to talk about the platform in a minute, but mm -hmm. um, and this sort of ties into it. But first and foremost, I think so me having this show. I don't, I actually don't have like a ton of, of other lesbians on here. We're not, I guess we're not as vocal. We're not as widespread. And like the fertility journey piece for um, a homosexual couple is so very different than really anything else. And you guys are very vocal about your fertility journey. And sometimes I get somebody on the show that I literally just want them to like talk about their story. Right. So I'd love to hear a little bit about your fertility journey and how you put it out there and then we can kind of transition to you know yeah. LGBT mommy's tribe and talk through that too yeah um to be honest we do we've posted more recently about our journey but we're we're quite private in regards to we're careful what we put out there like we don't really post have, much about the kids to be totally you have to be I but everyone's you everyone's different and everyone yeah. enjoys sharing different parts of their journey for us the organization isn't about us um sharing our lived experience we feel helps um, so others can, you know, feed up and go, oh, hold, hold on, that, that's me, that's what happened to me. Or, well, okay, I know that's what might happen. Um, but for us, it's all about our worldwide tribe, our community, and all the women and people we support. So we do share, now and again, parts of our journey in this pregnancy. Um, so we started about 10 years ago. Um, we decided to go down the fertility treatment route and wanted to go through a clinic. So we used a clinic in London called CRGH, um, which is amazing. And we've worked with them for nearly a decade. And Zytec Sperm Bank in the US, um, where we got our sperm files from. So all of our babies are from Zytec. And they were amazing too. And so my wife carried first because she had PCRS really severe. And they said she'd never have children. Clinic said, no, she will. We'll get her pregnant. So um, we went for IUI, knowing it would take a while. Um, we had three failed cycles. The fourth, she fell pregnant. and We lost the baby in the first trimester. Um, she miscarried. And then the fifth, we got our daughter. And then she was a terror. So she just didn't sleep. Poo problems, you know, wind problems, reflux, everything. <laughs> Colic. Um, so it put us off for a while. Three years of no sleep. So it took us a while to get to the point of baby two. 
and then I carried and then I fell um, naturally second around by UI really quickly and had our son and then we thought no we want another one so just before the pandemic started um, having treatment three failed cycles IUI we're like what's happening uh, further test revealed that I have secondary infertility so my ovarian reserve had diminished by half and I was 33 at the time so I was like wow that's crazy um, no reason I'm really healthy don't smoke don't drink um, it can just happen hmm. so that happened and then we moved to IVF then lockdown happened in uh, in the UK so it got cancelled oh we'll collect your eggs that got cancelled so we had to wait two and a half months came back had IVF two transfers of embryos high quality failed just just didn't understand what had gone on so it really just blew us away to be honest um we were heartbroken and then we tried again frozen transfer and that's when I fell pregnant so we are really really lucky um but yeah it's been it's been a difficult one you know me falling pregnant the second time was was great really quickly my wife's journey was really quite difficult and we did take some months out in between after the miscarriage um and this time I think it just threw us because I think there's a misconception and we talk about it a lot now in regards to misconceptions that just because you felt pregnant once doesn't mean the second or third time that you'll fall again easily. Um, things happen, things change, and your body changes, your fertility diminishes. So yeah, it was a it was a big eye opener for us. Yeah. I think the move from IUI to IVF I think helps with what we do as an organisation because we have that lived experience and that insight into those kind of different treatments, which is good. But yeah, it's tough. It's tough for everyone, isn't it? It is. It's tough. And you know, like the mental toll it takes is just, it, mm. it's sort of like, it, like inexplainable, right? Like it's, it's really, really difficult because every month you're like, oh, we failed. Oh, we failed. We failed. And like that mm. terminology of like failure. It's the word failure. It's the word. Yeah, and like, fail. you know, and like, it's what we use because it's like sort of what it is, but like, we're not failing, right? Like we're just trying to get pregnant like everyone else. And like, I feel like with heterosexual couples, they don't really say like, we failed this month. Like they're like, yeah. oh, we're just not pregnant yet. I need to fornicate more. It didn't work. Right. Yeah. Let's just <laughs> keep have going at it. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't like, we have to really, really plan for this shit. Yeah. You know? And that's like, that's why I get very ragey about things. Like, and I, you know, we, we've talked a little bit like second parent adoption. I don't know. Is that even a thing in the UK? Second parent adoption. Yeah. Cause yeah. obviously for us, well, for our uh, LGBT plus women and people in our community, if you go down the route of not, um, having treatment at clinic and you have home insemination, home AI, IVI, ICI. Um, if you go down that route and you're not married, um, you got, can't both be on the birth certificate. So that's the law. You have to enter into a heteronormative marriage, even if you don't want to, to both be on the birth certificate. Otherwise you can't. So for a lot of people, they have to go through second parent adoption because that process, that law doesn't protect them them the donor the child so they have to legally if they're not married or civil partnered go through second parent adoption to adopt the child which can be in a costly and lengthy process so some opt to get married beforehand just for you know formality um but others don't want to be pushed into that it's not you know marriage isn't right for everyone neither is civil partnership but so if you're on the birth certificate you have the legal protection yes not here no Mm -mm, not here so where we are in New York like we're fine you know we're just protected as you know we're in a little bit more of a liberal seat but another state that doesn't view it yeah. my name on that birth certificate means nothing it's just crazy isn't it how it differs from especially in the U.S. from state to state and that there, there's not just the one set of laws that protects LGBT plus families across mm -hmm. the whole country it's just so disparate isn't it it, it totally is. I mean, I even think in terms of like the fertility journey, right? So like, and I don't, I don't know what it looks like there, but you know, like you, you, we were, you know, emailing the other day and you're like, oh, I have to change it because I have to go to the midwife. Like mm -hmm. that is so standard. And so like accepted where mm -hmm. you are, you know, like my wife's a doula. And when I tell people, okay, my doula, thing. they're like, what? Like, these are not like, easily accessible things and they're such valuable things yeah I, I don't know you know and you don't ever have, you don't have to answer me but like insurance and things here yeah oh my god like you know so doesn't cover anything like IUI IVF like I think we I think what we had found out last time and I have new insurance now 
12 failed IUI cycles before they would even think about covering it. We don't have insurance like that, but that's crazy, 12. Um, Here, obviously, we have the NHS, so you get midwives, you get all Hmm. the scans and appointments. You know, we're lucky to have that. But then when it comes to insurance, like personal private health insurance or health insurance through employees, you're not covered for fertility treatments. So if you can't afford it and in your local area, so it's called um, a trust, your local trust, Mm -hmm. um, and they have a clinical commissioning group, a CTG, and they get a budget and then they review and then they review the art, um, art policy and they say, do we want to offer this or not? And they basically, every trust has the right to say yes or no. So you could go and say, oh, I'm from this area. You know, do I get free funding for facility? And they'll go, no. But then you'll go 10 minutes down the road and be in another area, another trust. And they'll say, yes, you do. But you've got to pay six private rounds before we'll consider you. Whereas then if you go to Wales or Scotland, you might go to a specific area and be told, yes, we cover you because you've got fertility issues. Great. And then you get access. So all across the UK, depending on where you live, it's completely different. And if you live in an area where you don't have access, which we haven't for the last two um, houses that we've obviously lived in together, that's it. Luckily, we've been able to, you know, scrape together and afford it and save. But there's people that will never, ever be able to afford fertility clinic treatment to have a baby. So they get pushed down an alternative route. So they'll go down the home route or they'll go down adoption fostering, which is great. Sure. But if that's not your chosen first route, that's a human right for us we feel it's a human right that you should have we agree your first chosen route to parenthood or motherhood you shouldn't have to take an alternative route and that's the thing so a lot of people don't have access but there's a lot of people across the us that we support that just don't have access at all Mm -mm. and it's just crazy we don't have access or education So Mm -hmm. like you're able to speak very, very intelligently. And obviously like with what you guys do, you have a lot of access to information and you gather a lot of information to help people. The United States, we really don't, it's like this unspoken weird thing. You know, I feel like in heterosexual couples, it's very, very normalized to say, we're having difficulty getting pregnant. We're going to try, we're going to try this. We're going to do this. That journey is like celebrated, right? Oh my God, this heterosexual woman got pregnant on her fifth IV, like whatever, insert yeah. uh, thing here for gay couples here. It's the lack of education is staggering, which, yeah. you know, pretty good segue. Like, that's why my wife was following you guys first. And she was like, mm-hmm. you need to check this out because I think you're going to really like it. Cause I'm always, always complaining about this, doing nothing, just always complaining. Right? <laughs> that's sort of my like aesthetic. Um, you're doing something now. So you're doing, yeah, I'm doing good. Like, here, here I am. I'm wearing my legalized gay shirt. We're on. Love it. Thank you. And you know, I've had people be like, well, Prop 8 was repealed. I'm like, take this out and the rest still stands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter. Prop, whatever, like prop, go fuck yourself. It doesn't matter. Legalized. <laughs> so, you know, my wife was following you and she said like, Hey, Jess, check this out. You'll like it. And what I love about you guys is, and it's like I said in your intro, it's very, very consumable. You share pictures and videos of, of women getting pregnant and sharing their great news and education, which is something again here, we are severely, severely lacking. And, you know, mm-hmm. I could shit all over the United States all day. Cause it's just where I am as a person <laughs> right now. And I think where a lot of people are <laughs> right now, but it's not I think everyone's weird. like it. Oh my God. Everybody's like, where can I'm like, does, does England want me? Can I come? Like, can I move anywhere? Um, Canada? Like, I'll I don't think you get in at the minute. We're all like, no, we can't not let anywhere. anyone in. It's crazy. No, yeah. we can't go anywhere or do anything. We're stuck here, but whatever. Yeah. I'm going to get bashed for that. People be like, if you don't like it, leave. We're trying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we're staying, but the education piece that you guys are bringing to the table is what drew me to you. So, you know, I'd love okay. to hear about the vision of LGBT Mommy's Tribe, where it's going, what you're excited about, and just, you know, the whole the whole platform in general, what, what yeah. it's about. Yeah, I mean, as an organization, when we started out, it was just purely an Instagram page. It came out, it was born out of a need. Um, the fact that through our lives experience, we just didn't have anyone to bounce off to hear, you know, oh, what, what, medication are you on and how much did it cost you and what clinic or what sperm bank did you we didn't have any of that um and at the time what you had myspace had died you had facebook and it was just new out and 
it, it was just difficult to find anyone and there was no central source of information, no community or safe haven. So we thought we don't want anyone else to go through what we went through where we just kind of floundered and we just had to do it alone. We didn't have anyone that understood us and went, I get you, I'm, I'm you. Um, so by the time we had our second and we were getting contacted in the street, um, in the GP surgery, in the supermarket, you know, when she was getting stitched up after our daughter was born, you know, nurse ran in and was like, can I ask? Like, I've got a friend and she's married like you. How did you have the baby? I've talked about you and do you mind telling me? And she had a notepad and pen. And I was like, that's just so wrong that people haven't got access to that information or other people. Can I ask, so, she like, so I've, ha- I've had this experience, but like, I'm you, yeah. right? We have similar experiences. Yeah. Did she like ask it very quietly and privately? Yeah. It was like, wow. like I'm really a, sorry to bother you. It's a big yeah. I had, I had the the dental assistant ask. I think me because they're not supposed ago. to ask. Are they? No, they're not. They're it's like this like... big secret. This woman came up to me like she was like, "Hey, can I? I'm so sorry to bother you. Like, can I just at my friend is trying to get pregnant on her? She's not a lesbian." And I was like, "Okay, yeah, like." <laughs> Here you go. I was like, you can take my number, tell her to, you know, call me. But yeah. yeah, sorry. But yeah, that's it's an odd experience. People want yeah. to know, but they're like almost embarrassed. And I think like, it's the embarrassment they don't want to offend. Yeah, they just offend. don't want to offend. They don't want to get it wrong. And it's like almost, I don't want to be seen asking this because obviously in her case, she she was like, I'm really sorry to bother you because she'd right. just been stitched up. Um, sure. but it was fine. Um, we're, we're all about educating, you know, everyone's different. Of can be private but for us we're happy to do so it depends on how it's approached and asked and the language used um and so just in the end we knew that there was a need so we started it off as an instagram page and then it just blew up and then i got invited to meet the prime minister was doing work with stonewall and then it just snowballed um and grew and grew and grew and then we were working with different organizations and we were like no we need to do this as an actual proper business an organization to support people and yeah, globally, we're over 30,000 now, which doesn't sound a lot, but in less it than three though. years, it's it's quite a lot. And, and nothing else like that exists, though. That's what people have to remember. Yeah. It's really like one of a kind. So yeah, are you like, okay, 30,000 in the grand scheme of a global world? What I, like, yeah. And it's three years. That's 10,000 people a year based on higher mathematics, right? Like, yeah. that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. cool. So yeah, it's just... It just grew. And I think out of that, you know, we have five support groups, we have events over here. Obviously, we'd love to extend it worldwide, but, you know, it's cost and it's getting places and COVID has really hindered that. But, um, and then out of that, just being in sales from my other job, it's just kind of grown into more of a campaign thing as well and more around policy across healthcare and visibility and education. So we do a lot of education and training with organizations to, educate them in how to support LGBT plus women and people better and their families. And we now work with directly the NHS, National Health Service over here, um, in their maternity programs, um, just speaking about and educating them in basically everything that they need to change to, in a positive way to get the best outcome no. for our people. But to say the, these, all these policies don't support us, we're not visible, and we're not supported enough, it needs to improve here's how not just our experience but everyone that we support this is we're speaking on behalf our voice is everyone's voice this is what needs to change so we do a hell of a lot of policy work so that has grown over the years and that's probably just as important as the community work because there's no point just supporting people if you're going I'm really sorry to hear that and you know I'm here to support you but nothing I can do about it actually there is something we can do and we can speak to the people at top so that that policy can get updated and, you know, come down. So we've met with the government as well, which was exciting. That's it all terrible. takes time. Of course. So, yeah. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. It's, it's so great. It's so cool. Um, and more importantly than that, I think I need to call out some things because you said some things that I'm like, oh, she's British Jess. Only child, English major, actor in sales. So listen, I don't want to say, you know, they're like, oh, doppelganger, not physically, but like, <laughs> what? We <Well>, yeah. are. <laughs> Look at that. So like, how done? Good. How done? There you go. Yeah, that's better. Put your glasses on and you have dark hair, light eyes. This is pretty good. 
I've got a chubbier face than you. But you yeah, do not. That, listen, this bitch is real. <laughs> this, this face is I'm like, like a this chipmunk. Sh- <laughs> no, are you kidding? This it's the shape of a basketball. <laughs> so like, I want to dribble your head, and I'm like, I don't think I want that for me. Um, yeah, <laughs> but very, very funny. A lot of similarities, and yeah. like, you know, you're obviously your passion for the LGBT community is yeah amazing too. Um, and I think you know the what you said in terms of like, yes, it's wonderful to have support. It's wonderful to be able to say to somebody, hey, I I hear you. Mm. It's like the equivalent of like thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Like who cares, you know, and, and I'll probably, I'm going to email you offline, like about anything we can do here because it's to have something like this be global. You need like boots on the ground to actually make these changes. Exactly. Um, and there's like nothing on our end, you know, my wife and I in sort of our friend group that we're more passionate about. You know, this is the biggest thing. So I, I think it's amazing. Um, you know, my, my last question before we start to wrap it up is, you know, what's, what's next for you guys? Like, what are you excited about? Obviously outside of like producing another child, but like, what's, <laughs> Give birth, yeah. Yeah, you know, pushing her out, but like, what's next? Yeah. Um, continuing with the campaigning, but actually getting these policies pushed through obviously our neck of the woods, but actually, you know, we've engaged with GLAAD, we've engaged with a lot of organizations over in the US and in other countries. And we work globally with clinics, sperm banks all around the world. But it's not just about educating those organisations and working with them to be more inclusive and diverse. It's about talking to large organisations, educating them. Are you supporting your employees? Are you supporting your family members? Are you supporting your friends? You know, us being visible is important when pride comes and all the brands all of a sudden oh my god yeah we all want to work with all these lgbt plus <sighs> brands and then all of a sudden we're put back in the closet for another year for us it's a bugbear because there's ones that we work with consistently and they support us all year round but when you see brands that want to lgbt history month or during pride season they want to get involved with you but they don't want to do the real hard work the rest of the time that you're not doing you're not being an ally you're not doing the hard work um we're no. just you're just tokenizing us and that's not to be negative and say you know we don't want the sport we do but we want it all year round you can't just pick us up and milk the pink pounds because you know that we spend billions of dollars and pounds every year as consumers you need to support us all year round you need to make us visible where are your campaigns where are the two lesbians where's the non-binary people where's the trans people in your in your imagery, in your marketing, in, you know, where's your use of language of pronouns? You know, Mm -hmm. when are you talking about our community? Are you actually targeting our community? We spend an F ton of money. Yes, we do. You need to support us. We bring your property values up, friends. Just a reminder. (laughs) Please bring your property values up. But that's the thing. It's a case of we want to use our voices to amplify our tribe and our community's voices and you know it's not just lesbians we support it's you know lgbt plus women and people non-binary people that identify um within our community as mothers but they may be they or them but then it may be some as she and her but they're non-binary there's so many people yeah. that we support but i think we kind of looked at who we were as well and we were trying to branch out we were going to change the name we were going to really grow as an organization and we really sat down with a PR company and looked at it and they said, what are you good at? This is what you're good at. What do you wish you were good at? And we said, we want to support the whole community. It's not doable for us. We're not big enough. There's not enough of us. You know, we need to do what we're good at. And when people come to us, you know, when trans men come to us and say, you know, I need support, I'm struggling. Of course, we're not the right fit for you. It's a, you know, we're not appropriate. However, we know an organisation that is right for you. We work with them we're allies to them we're allies to you we you know use our voices to amplify your pain and what you need worldwide but at the same time we're probably not the best fit for you this organization is and we connect people and we've had that question before why don't you why are you called the mummy's tribe why are you not all lgbt plus or same-sex parents um whatever it is but that's why because we've got to do what we're good at and what we know we can do within our capabilities and within our remit but we can support other people by using our voices and giving them the right support in the right places. Yeah. And that's the thing. Too many organisations try to do too much. And there's some really amazing organisations that can do it all. 
we're not of that size that we could maybe in 10 years time sure. but right now it's not something I think for us we always try to take on too much and that's when you start failing people and the thought of failing people in our community I'd rather do what we're good at and then push them the right way than not not do it right and fail people and then feel like we haven't supported them right so it's been a journey but I think we just need to understand our community what they want listen a lot more what are we good at what are we not good at so continue the work really but just really get an understanding of where people's struggles are why where are they not being heard what countries are they not being heard in you know we've got people in Russia people that have fled their country because they can't have children people that are messaging us from a country where they can't have fertility treatment where can I go what's near me um they you know some of our tribe are really 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 struggling really yeah. want a family and they're on a time limit a ticking clock and they're not protected you know there's countries where they they will get arrested the children will be taken into, into social services if they find out that they've got children and they're not just friends it's it's really scary it's really scary how, yeah. how disparate it is worldwide you know we, we're lucky we moan about healthcare and how we're not visible but then in other parts of the US or other parts of Europe you know other parts of the world where they're just not supported they're not visible it's illegal I get messages from people I want a baby my wife wants a baby it's illegal here where do we go we can't tell anyone please don't you know don't tell anyone we're like we, we wouldn't do that but that's that's heartbreaking when you get those messages and you think oh my god we're moaning about oh you're lucky you have one and then we're moaning about it yeah but then there's right. people and it may, it brings you back down to earth and you think god we're so lucky so lucky you're right you're totally right and you we don't you know we don't take inventory of it enough like no. my wife and I are incredibly lucky we're able to be you know in our community everybody knows mm. oh, those are the lesbians who live on <laughs> like but you know like we don't have yeah. fear around it we have fear around yeah. it broader scale and like mm. you know like you, there are things in the United States that are not great yeah in terms of like how gay people are viewed but we are in a very fortunate position where we could pretend to just be friends if we had to. Yeah. You know, which sucks, but like there are people who you can't even, I mean, there are countries you can't even mention it. You can't yeah. even mention it. There's, it's just totally illegal. So yeah, right. You're or religions right. or even religions oh where people say, oh my gosh, like if my family knew I was even talking to an organization like you or even follow, I can't follow you because someone might see, or I can't post in a, in a group because someone might, my clock it and it's really dangerous for me it's dangerous for me to be who I am that word dangerous or fear you know we've had situations where we've been to certain countries and we've been told do you know what if you had children in another country or you had children in this country they'd be taken off you because of what you are you know that that's fear that's that's horrendous and that's a holiday not that's not everyday life yeah Oh, it's, it's disgusting. It's really disgusting. But the work that you guys are doing by you guys, I mean, you and you and your wife are the the co-founders of it and you work together. It's incredible. It's really amazing. And, you know, I encourage everybody to to check them out and, you know, get involved where you can, you know, there's, there's so much work to be done. There's so much and, you know, there it's, it's never ending. It's never, it's, Mm -hmm. there's never going to be a perfect scenario where, you know, people are just people there's always going to be this sort of like gay straight divide. So there's, there's never yeah. ending work. So, you know, follow mm. along and we'll, you know, like I said, we'll chat and see what we can kind of have happen together, but yeah. let's, let's start to wrap up here. Cause I know you have to go pick your kids up That's from, okay. from somewhere and do something because you're pregnant and have the flu and you know, <laughs> you gotta go. so here's my two, my two final questions for you. So first one, you have, you know, two different age kids, one on the way. What is something right now? you cannot live without as a mom as a mom chocolate. or as like a person I don't know Whatever. chocolate <laughs> no, as a mom chocolate chocolate that's fine that's a good answer Cad- Cadbury's fruit and nut chocolate you know if, if there isn't okay yeah if it's not available I do get a bit upset it's sad. <laughs> but yeah <laughs> those are the real issues no. by the way that's the it work is. we should be doing Exactly. That's where you no. should steer your campaigns. Is no, cuddles. I, I think cuddles. I think especially Aww. at the moment where you can't see anyone. And, you know, some of our family we haven't seen for like five months. Yeah. Some people we haven't seen for like a year, year and a half because of treatment and shielding. Um, cuddles. Just want to yeah. hug people. So Love it's it. going to be really weird getting back out of lockdown and being like, 
yeah. wanting to hug everyone. They'll be like, what are you doing? <laughs> Let <off>. go. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is weird. Cause I told you my wife and I are both vaccinated and, and getting to yeah. see people. I'm not like a warm, fuzzy hugger to begin with, but now I'm like, who wants a hug? Bring it in. I'm here. <laughs> I'm right here. I'm all of a sudden very cuddly. Let's do it. And then I'm like, okay, wait, I forgot. I don't like it. Don't touch Come me. past the 10 seconds. You're like, come past the 10 <laughs> seconds. I'm just going to enjoy it a little longer. <laughs> you get to that like 15 second mark and they're like, is she into me? And you're like, yeah. no. Is she, is she, she rubbing up against me? No. <laughs> she <is just> rubbing <laughs> up. That just, she'll get you. Okay. My final question for you. What is something you know now? that you wish you knew before becoming a mom? I wish I'd known how judgmental people would be when you become a parent, like everyone. <laughs> yes. Like everyone. Um, every single person and their dog wants to comment on how you feed your child, how you talk to your child, how you reprimand your child, how your child sleeps, how you had your child, how many children you have. Like there's so many different things. Oh, the fact that if you didn't carry your child, why didn't you carry your child? And do you feel the same about them? And, you know, you're not the real mum comes up all the time. And it's like, there's so many, you know, there's so many barriers and implications to being a parent, being a parent through treatment or another route, but then being an LGBT plus parent, there's so many more hurdles. So it's a lot of layers. It's a lot of pressure for people. And yeah, just how judgmental and how nosy and opinionated people are as a whole. And that's the thing we try and always, especially with like friends, like anyone, just support people, just listen. And if people do it different to you, does it affect you? No. Do they need your advice? They'll ask. Um, Sometimes people just feel the need to give you advice unwanted. I'll just politely take it and say, thanks, that's not going to work, but thanks. (laughs) Again, (laughs) the difference between you and I, um, take that (laughs) very differently. (laughs) You're like, why? Don't talk to me. I don't need to hear that. Like, I just kind of you know, sit there and like cover my ears to be extra yeah. rude, but that's, you know, that's where you and I differ. Different. We have all of our similarities, <laughs> but that mature, polite piece is where perhaps we, you know, we, we got like, you know, disband. So I think I've got, I, I used to be like that previously. I think as I've got older, maybe it's just a lack of effort. I just go, okay. You're younger than I'm me. Like, <laughs> I don't think I am. You are. You I just said you were 33 when you got pregnant. So you're younger than me. No, it was 33 when we started. I'm 35 next month. I'm 35 currently. Okay, just slightly. <laughs> you look younger than me. <laughs> You're like, okay, fine. You are okay. older than me and more immature. Really Whatever. <laughs> but Listen, who cares? It gets You're the job your own done. Person. That's right. We get <laughs> both of us in our own mature and loud ways get the job done. But Laura Rose, thank you for being here. It is a treat to have you. Um, you too. Thank go you. Go relax. Go feel better. Where can people follow along? What's the easiest way to find you? And I'll, I'll tag it out. It's the longest company name ever, but <laughs> www.thelgbtmummiestribe.com or on Instagram, um, which is our biggest social channel, um, the underscore LGBT underscore mummies underscore tribe. Um, and then on Facebook, it's the LGBT mummies tribe and an X because we couldn't get the other one with the underscores. Don't know what happened. Facebook um, is garbage. Yeah, that makes when, sense. When we're not on Twitter, it's too angry for us and we don't want to subject our community to it. So we, we kind of go ahead against the grain. We, we don't always do things. If everyone goes, why haven't you got one? I'm like, because we don't want to. It'll work for you. In that way, I'm like, no. See? It's just too angry. It's not kind. So, yeah. Just you're you're going to hit 35 in two months, and all of a sudden, you're going to be screaming and yelling, and you're going to be like, Jess said I would. She said I would. You'll see. She'd say I'd be furious. She said, said I'd be furious. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for being here, and thank you guys thank for you. tuning in to Shit Moms Won't Say. We'll see you next week. Thank you.